Hi guys, welcome to my study compass. In this video, I'll be walking you through the past paper, Math P3, Variant 3, May June 2020. Let's get started. Write down a fraction equivalent to 1 over 15. To get a fraction equivalent to 1 over 15, we multiply the numerator and denominator by a positive integer aside 1. If we pick 2, 1 times 2 gives us 2, and 15 times 2 gives us 30. So we have 2 over 30. Find a fraction that is greater than 1 over 15, but less than 2 over 15. One of the ways we can arrive at this number is this. Notice that the two fractions we've been given have the same denominator, which is 15. So to get the fraction that has a value between 1 over 15 and 2 over 15, we maintain the denominator to be 15 and pick a numerator between 1 and 2. If we type 1.5 over 15 into the calculator, we get the simplified fraction to be 1 over 10. Write 15% as a decimal. When we type 15% into the calculator, we get its decimal form to be 0.15. Shade 15% of this grid. The grid is made up of 40 boxes. 15% of 40 is 6, so we shade 6 boxes. Write down all the factors of 15. To get the factors of 15, we first need to list the numbers that multiply to give us 15. From this, we see that the factors of 15 are 1, 3, 5, and 15. Find the value of square root of 15. Give your answer correct to three decimal places. When we type square root of 15 into the calculator, we get 3.873 rounded to three decimal places. Write down the reciprocal of 15. The reciprocal of any number is 1 over the number. So the reciprocal of 15 is 1 over 15. Write down the value of 15 raised to the power 0. Any number raised to the power 0 is 1, so 15 raised to the power 0 is 1. Write 0 0.015 in standard form. To write this number in standard form, we move the decimal point to a position after the first non-zero digit, which is 1. So we have 1.5. Since we moved the decimal point 2 units to the right, we multiply 1.5 by 10 raised to the power negative 2. The diagram shows a line AB on a 1 cm square grid. Write down the coordinates of point A. When we map A onto the x-axis, we get negative 1. And when we map it onto the y-axis, we get negative 2. So we have negative 1, negative 2. Write down the vector AB. On the grid, to move from A to B, we move 6 units to the right. So vector AB is 6, 0. Vector BC is negative 2, 5. Mark point C on the grid. Vector BC tells us that to move from point B to C, we need to move 2 units to the left and 5 units upwards. On the grid, after implementing this movement, we are able to mark point C. Work out AB plus BC. We found AB to be 6, 0 and we've been given BC to be negative 2, 5. So for the resulting vector, we add corresponding elements in both vectors. So 6 plus negative 2 is 4, and 0 plus 5 is 5, so we have 4, 5. Complete this statement. AB plus BC equals blank. Moving from A to B, then B to C, is the same as moving from A to C. A, B, and C are three vertices of a parallelogram A, B, C, D. Mark point D on the diagram and draw the parallelogram A, B, C, D. First, let's connect points A, B, and C. A parallelogram has opposite sides parallel. 
So we can plot D so that CD is parallel to BA or such that AD is parallel to BC. Let's say we want to plot D so that CD is parallel to BA. To move from point B to A, we move 6 units to the left. So to plot point D, we move 6 units from the left from point C. When we are done, we connect the remaining two lines to complete the parallelogram. Work out the area of the parallelogram. Give the units of your answer. Here is the formula for the area of a parallelogram. From the grid, we get the base B to be 6 cm and the height H to be 5 cm. This gives us 30 cm squared. The diagram shows a rectangular patio with sides 6 meters and 8 meters. Work out the perimeter of the patio. Here is the formula for the perimeter of the patio, which is in the shape of a rectangle. The length L is 6 meters and the width W is 8 meters. This gives us 28 meters. Henry covers the patio floor with square tiles. The tiles are 0.5 meters by 0.5 meters. Work out the number of tiles he needs. To get the number of tiles, we divide the area of the patio, which is 6 times 8 meters squared, by the area of a tile, which is 0.5 times 0.5 meters squared. This gives us 192. The diagram shows the net of a solid on a 1 cm square grid. Write down the mathematical name for the solid. The solid is a cuboid. Work out the volume of the solid. Here is the formula for the volume of a cuboid. From the net, we get the length L to be 5 cm, the width W to be 2 cm, and the height H to be 1 cm. This gives us 10 cm cubed. A square has perimeter 12x. Find an expression in terms of x for the area of the square. Give your answer in its simplest form. Here is the formula for the area of a square. We need to find L. Here is the formula for the perimeter of a square. We've been given the square's perimeter to be 12x. When we divide both sides by 4, we get L to be 3x. So now the area is 3x all squared, which is equal to 9x squared. The diagram shows a semicircle with diameter AC. B is a point on the circumference and AB equals BC. Work out the area of triangle ABC. Here is the formula for the area of a triangle. We need to find B and H. We know that an angle formed in a semicircle is 90 degrees. And we also know that the base angles in an isosceles triangle are equal. So when we subtract 90 degrees from 180 degrees and divide by 2, we get 45 degrees. Now that we know these angles and we've been given the length of AC, we can use Sokatwa to get the base and the height of the triangle. When we type this into the calculator, we get 25 centimeters squared. A road has 349 houses on it, numbered from 1 to 349. The diagram shows some of these houses. The houses on the west side of the road have odd numbers. The houses on the east side have even numbers. Put a ring around the numbers in this list that are on the west side. When we look at the west side, we see that all the houses are odd numbered. So we circle the odd numbers 25, 87, and 329. On the east side, how many houses are there between the house numbered 168 and the house numbered 184? On the east side, the houses are even numbered. Here are the even numbers between 168 and 184. They are 7 in total. 
How many houses on the road have a house number that is a multiple of 39? One of the ways we can go about this is to divide the total number of houses, which is 349 by 39. This gives us 8.9. This means there are 8 houses that have a multiple of 39. Thomas delivers a leaflet to every house on the west side of the road. He starts at house number 1 and then delivers to each house in order. Find an expression in terms of n for the house number of the nth house he delivers to. The house numbers on the west side have a constant difference between them. So we can use this formula to get the nth house. A1 which is the first house he delivers to is numbered 1. As he delivers the leaflets, the numbers on the houses keep increasing by 2, so the common difference D is 2. When we expand the brackets, 2 times n is 2n, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. When we group like terms, 1 minus 2 is minus 1, so we have 2n minus 1. Work out the house number of the 40th house he delivers to. To get this number, we plug in n equals 40 into the nth term we found in the previous question. So we have 2 times 40 minus 1, which is equal to 79. Work out how many houses are on the west side of the road. To get this, we equate the number of the final house on the west side, which is 349, to 2n minus 1. When we add 1 to both sides, we get 2n equals 350. And when we divide both sides by 2, we get n equals 175. Alicia delivers a leaflet to every house on the east side of the road. She starts at house number 348 and then delivers to each house in order. Find an expression in terms of n for the number of the nth house she delivers to. The house numbers on the east side have a constant difference between them. So we can use this formula to get the nth term for the houses. A1, which is the first house she delivers to, is numbered 348. As she delivers the leaflets, the numbers on the houses keep decreasing by 2. So the common difference, D, is negative 2. When we expand the brackets, negative 2 times n is negative 2n. Negative 2 times negative 1 is 2. When we group like terms, 348 plus 2 is 350. So we have 350 minus 2n. What is the largest value of n that can be used in your expression? Give a reason for your answer. The largest value of n is 174 because when n is greater than 174, we get house numbers that are 0 or negative. The Venn diagram shows information about the number of students in a class who like apples and bananas. Work out the number of students in the class. The number of students in the class is equal to 12 plus 8 plus 7 plus 4, which gives us 31. Work out the number of students who like bananas. The number of students who like bananas is 8 plus 7, which is equal to 15. Work out the number of students in A Union B. The number of students in the region A Union B is equal to 12 plus 8 plus 7, which gives us 27. How many more students like apples than like bananas? In other words, we are to find the difference between the number of students who like apples and who like bananas. So we subtract the number of students who like bananas, which is 7 plus 8, from the number of students who like apples, which is 12 plus 8. This gives us 5. One of the students is chosen at random. Find the probability that this student does not like apples and does not like bananas. This probability is equal to the number of students who do not like apples and do not like bananas, which is 4, divided by the total number of students, which we found to be 31. 
the mass m grams of a banana is 115 grams correct to the nearest 5 grams complete the statement about the value of m to correct the mass m to the nearest 5 grams we have 115 grams then we bring in plus and minus 5 grams then we divide 5 grams by 2 so for the lower bound of m we have 115 minus 5 over 2 grams which is equal to 112.5 grams and for the upper bound of m we have 115 plus 5 over 2 grams which is equal to 117.5 grams so we have m is greater than and equal to 112.5 and less than 117.5 Six of the students bring an apple to school one day. The list shows the mass of each apple correct to the nearest gram. Find the mode. The mode is the number that appears the most and that is 82. Find the range. The range is equal to the highest number which is 103 minus the lowest number which is 78. This gives us 25. Find the median. First, we need to arrange the numbers in ascending order. To get the position of the median, we use the formula half n plus 1, where n in this case is 6. This gives us 3.5. This means the median is between the third and fourth numbers. The third number is 82 and the fourth number is 88. So the median is 82 plus 88 divided by 2, which is equal to 85. Another student, Tony, also brings an apple to school. The mean mass of the seven apples is 89 grams. Work out the mass of Tony's apple. Let's represent the mass of Tony's apple with x. The mean of the seven apples, which has been given as 89 grams, is equal to the sum of the masses of all the apples, which is 82 plus 94 plus 78 plus 103 plus 88 plus 82 plus x, divided by the number of apples, which is 7. The sum of these numbers gives us 527. When we multiply both sides by 7, this is what we get. And when we subtract 527 from both sides, we get x equals 96. 10 students eat cereal with milk for breakfast. The amounts are shown in the table. Complete the scatter diagram. The first six points have been plotted for you. On the grid, we plot the points 28,150, 40,230, 55,340, and 46,220. For these students, describe the relationship between the amount of cereal and the amount of milk. From the scatter diagram, we see that as the amount of cereal increases, there is a general increase in the amount of milk. On the grid, draw a line of best fit. On the grid, we've drawn a line of best fit. The general rule of thumb for drawing a line of best fit is to ensure that it passes through as many points as possible while balancing an equal number of points above and below the line. Another student has 280 milliliters of milk with her cereal. Use your line of best fit to estimate an amount of cereal the student has. On the grid, when we map 280 mil from the vertical axis onto the line of best fit, we get the mass of the cereal to be 53 grams. Explain why the scatter diagram should not be used to estimate the amount of milk for a student who has more than 70 grams of cereal. This is because a value greater than 70 grams of cereal is outside the collected data. 100 grams of cereal contains 360 kilocalories. 100 ml of milk contains 45 kilocalories. 
For breakfast, Sasha has 35 grams of cereal with 180 ml of milk. Work out the number of kilocalories Sasha has for breakfast. Let's start by finding the amount of kilocalories in 35 grams of cereal, which is what we are calling X. Given that every 100 grams of cereal contains 360 kilocalories, when we cross multiply and make X the subject, this is what we get, which is equal to 126 kilocalories. Now let's find the amount of kilocalories in 180 ml of milk, which is what we are calling Y. Given that every 100 ml of milk contains 45 kilocalories, when we cross multiply and make Y the subject, this is what we get, which is equal to 81 kilocalories. So the total calories Sasha has for breakfast is equal to 126 plus 81 kilocalories, which gives us 207 kilocalories. A shop sells cereal in boxes A, B, and C. Work out which box is the best value. You must show all your working. First, we divide the mass of each box by its cost. From these values, we see that box A gives us the highest amount of cereal for every dollar. The diagram shows a regular polygon. Write down the mathematical name for this shape. The polygon has six sides, so it's a hexagon. Write down the order of rotational symmetry of this shape. The order of rotational symmetry of regular hexagons is six. The diagram shows parts of a different regular polygon. E is an exterior angle. I is an interior angle. The ratio E is to I equals 2 is to 13. Work out angle E. Angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So the sum of E and I is 180 degrees. So to get angle E, we divide the ratio share for E, which is 2, by the total ratio of 2 plus 13, which is 15, and multiply by 180 degrees. This gives us 24 degrees. Work out the number of sides of this regular polygon. To get the number of sides in of the regular polygon, we use this formula. We found the exterior angle E to be 24 degrees. This gives us 15. Using a straight edge and compasses only, construct the equilateral triangle ABC. Side AB has been drawn for you. First, we need to measure the length of AB, which we get to be 4 cm. Since we are required to draw an equilateral triangle, the other two sides need to also have a length of 4 cm. So we measure the width of our compass to be 4 cm, stand at point A and construct an arc. Then using the same compass width, we stand at point B and construct another arc. The intersection point of the arc is the position of point C. So now, we complete the triangle by drawing two lines from AB to point C. In this part, all angles are in degrees. Use the information in the triangle to write down an equation in terms of X. The sum of the angles in the triangle must add up to 180 degrees. So we have 2x plus x plus 23 plus 2x minus 13 equals 180. When we group like terms, 2x plus x plus 2x is 5x. 23 minus 13 is 10. So we have 5x plus 10 equals 180. Solve this equation to find the value of x. Here is the equation we got from the previous solution. When we subtract 10 from both sides, we get 5x equals 170. And when we divide both sides by 5, we get x equals 34. Work out the size of the smallest angle in the triangle. First, we plug in the value of x into each of the three angles in the triangle. 
from this, we see that the smallest angle is 55 degrees. Complete the table of values for y equals negative x squared plus x plus 5. When we plug in x equals negative 3 into the equation, we get y equals negative 7. For x equals 0, we get y equals 5. For x equals 1, we get y equals 5. For x equals 3, we get y equals negative 1. And for x equals 4, we get y equals negative 7. On the grid, draw the graph of y equals negative x squared plus x plus 5. For x is greater than and equal to negative 3 and less than and equal to 4. On the grid, we plot all the points in the table and connect the points with a smooth line. Write down the coordinates of the highest point of the graph. On the grid, we see that the highest point of the graph has coordinates 0 0.5, 5.4. Write down the equation of the line of symmetry of the graph. The line of symmetry of the graph is the line that splits the graph into two mirror halves. On the grid, we see that the line of symmetry of the graph is x equals 0 0.5. On the grid, draw the line y equals x. For x is greater than and equal to negative 3 and less than and equal to 4. To draw a straight line, we need at least two points on the line. When we plug in x equals 3 into y equals x, we get y equals 3. And when we plug in x equals negative 3, we get y equals negative 3. On the grid, we plot these points and draw a straight line passing through the points. Write down the values of x, where the line y equals x crosses the curve y equals negative x squared plus x plus 5. On the grid, we see that the x values of the intersection points between the line and the curve are negative 2.3 and 2.4. A speedboat travels at 84 kilometers per hour. Change this speed into meters per minute. We've been given the speed to be 84 kilometers per hour. To convert 84 kilometers to meters, we multiply 84 by 1000. One hour is 60 minutes. When we type this into the calculator, we get 1400 meters per minute. The speedboat starts at x and travels to y, then to z, and then back to x. z is due south of x and y is due west of z. xy is 39 kilometers and xz is 21 kilometers. Calculate yz. To get yz, we apply the Pythagoras theorem. This gives us 39 squared equals yz squared plus 21 squared. When we make yz the subject, this is what we get. When we type this into the calculator, we get 32.9 kilometers rounded to three significant figures. Calculate angle yxz. To get angle yxz, we apply Sokatwa to the triangle. This gives us cos of angle yxz equals 21 kilometers divided by 39 kilometers. When we make angle yxz the subject, this is what we get. When we type this into the calculator, we get 57.4 degrees rounded to one decimal place. Find the bearing of y from x. On the diagram, we've indicated the bearing of y from x. Angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So the bearing is equal to 180 degrees plus 57.4 degrees. This gives us 237.4 degrees. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. See you in the next video. Bye guys.